Are we still calling this the Paleo Solution Podcast? Are we rolling? We are rolling. Uh, we are noodling on a rebrand, and part of the reason why we're noodling on a rebrand is that we're shifting probably 99.9999999% of our stuff to Q&A. Uh, the, the author uh, interview stuff, people generating books, like I think we've really like mapped that experience and folks were okay with it and it, it's cool, but what we've found is that people have specific questions about their individual needs and that that's probably the place that we shine the most. Every once in a while, if we find somebody that has some really cool stuff, like there are a couple of researchers that have some amazing work that they've done that I definitely want to interview at some point. So we'll weave a little bit of that in, but mainly we're shifting this around to a Q&A format. And so we are thinking about uh, uh, some sort of a rebrand. So we'll think about that. And I do have my cup of happy. It's my cup of happy, but you're using it. That's okay. <laughs> well, you won't let me use the cup that I usually use because of the, the what's on it. So, <laughs> All right, let's get going with question number one. It's a question from Rob. Electrolytes the whole time. Uh, Rob says, question for you that I can't seem to find an answer to anywhere else. Do I need to continue to consume the high levels of electrolytes the entire time I'm on keto? I'm still doing it twice a day, drink mix with about 2,300 milligrams of sodium, 350 milligrams of magnesium, and 1,200 milligrams of potassium. Yeah, so in general, if you're on a ketogenic diet, and this is one of the, the features, like if uh, uh, childhood epilepsy, ketogenic diet kind of scenario, they will be on a, a sodium-enriched diet in particular, and then trying to get the magnesium and potassium as much as possible from dietary sources, but the sodium is really the linchpin to that. I will say that over the course of time, usually those needs decrease to some degree, but there's a, just a ton of variability built into that. Uh, somebody on a low carb or ketogenic diet needs more sodium, period. Uh, but then anyone who is exercising, exercising in heat, exercising in heat and humidity, the American Council of Sports Medicine guidelines put the sodium needs between seven and 10 grams per day for an average size person. So uh, what we're finding, and this is completely self-serving because we're selling elements. And so, yeah, it's a completely self-serving statement, but a ton of people are com really under uh, uh, supplemented in sodium. And so uh, the, that's the longer answer. The short answer is, yeah, if you're on a lower carb diet, you're generally going to need to supplement over the long haul. Especially if you're training. Especially if you're training or doing any type of, yeah. And, and again, heat and humidity. I just got back from doing a training camp, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu down in Costa Rica. It wasn't blazing hot, but it was, you know, 85, 90 degrees, a, a non-air conditioned facility and uh, decent humidity, three time. hours. Yeah. And uh, uh, the folks that were not staying on top of the, the um, electrolyte supplementation, specifically sodium, were having bag cramping issues. And then when they addressed that, not only was their cramping decreased, but their fatigue and whatnot was improved.